Hello teacher. Hello students. Welcome to today's lesson in sketching techniques. In our last lesson, we have seen the use and application of freehand sketching and identified the freehand sketching materials along with how to use them. Let us briefly revise them now. In previous lesson, we have seen the techniques of sketching. In techniques of sketching, we have seen how to use our arm and finger to hold the pencil and draw long lines and short strokes. We also practiced of drawing circles, arcs and ellipses. We used the skill of estimation to divide line, triangle, rectangle and angles. Finally, we have seen how to keep the proportion of the object to be sketched. Students, I hope you have well practiced the techniques of sketching with your teacher on your practical hours. Today, we will see the techniques of sketching, multi-view drawing of 3D objects and practice the skill of a freehand sketch of any 3D objects in three types of pictorial drawing. But first, I want you to sketch the orthographic view of the object from the given axonometric view of an object.
Sketches made in orthographic projection are generally the top, front, and right side view of an object. However, the back, bottom, and left side views may have to be sketched occasionally. The method of sketching multi-view of an object can be outside in or inside out. When sketching the multi-view of an object from outside in, first outline the extremes of the box, which will include the entire view of the object with light layout lines. Then sketch a layout of major features. Next, sketch a layout of the minor details. Lastly, darken the lines that should remain on the final sketch. When sketching the multi-view of an object from inside out, the first step is to start from the detailed part of the object. No block in of the main outline is needed. When the construction of detailed part is finished, then darkening the true view of the object finalize the drawing. Both visible and hidden surfaces and edges are represented when sketching orthographic views. Remember to employ the correct line weights while sketching multi-view drawings. And you must develop these lines for all the required views. Well, students, try to apply the inside-out and the outside-in methods by drawing the orthographic view of the following object.
That was Ethia, wasn't it? Good. An oblique pictorial view shows one of the principal views in the plane of paper. The depth dimension will be sketched on an angular axis slanting away from the viewers at any angle between 15 degrees and 75 degrees. An oblique sketch can be effective when most of the detail is on a single surface, especially if most of the arcs or circles fall on this plane. In this case, the front surface is sketched as a front view, then the depth axis is added at 45 degrees. To sketch the oblique view of an object, first block in the front face of the object as if you were sketching a front view. Then sketch the receding lines parallel to each other at any angle between 15 degrees and 75 degrees with the horizontal. Then cut off the receding lines so that the depth appears correct. Then darken the final lines of the object. Remember, when sketching oblique drawing, the selection of front view and the direction of receding lines might vary depending on the shape of the object and the details to be revealed. Circles and arcs are distorted on the receding faces. These elliptical shapes are sketched after sketching the enclosing rhombuses whose sides are equal to the diameters of the circles. The ellipses should be sketched tangent to the sides of the rhombuses at their midpoints. The diagonals of the rhombus help in keeping the ellipse symmetrical. Well, students, I hope sketching oblique drawing is clear enough. Then, it's time to apply your understanding. A sketch the oblique drawing of the following object, which is given as an axonometric view.
The most common pictorial view to sketch is an axonometric drawing. Axonometric drawing can be later classified as isometric, diametric, and trimetric drawing. Let us see the differences in the method of sketching. Isometric drawing has three equal interior angles, which is 120 degrees. Diametric drawings has two equal interior angles, while triametric drawing has no equal interior angles. Isometric pictorial sketch is usually started with its vertical axis, then the other two axes, which are 30 degrees from the horizontal starting from the bottom of the vertical axis. Then sketch an enclosing box followed by the object's details. Note that the distance or dimensions are always measured parallel to the axis. Finally, draw the isometric lines which are established by the end points of isometric lines and darken the final view of the object. While sketching isometric circles, the center lines are parallel to one of the isometric axes. This means circles appear as ellipses. Axonometric drawing has a vertical axis and two axes are 30 degree to horizontal line. These lines are parallel to the isometric view of an object, while in perspective drawing, lines rather vanish to one more point and horizontal lines are never parallel to each other. Perspective drawings provide a more realistic and photographic output, unlike the axonometric and oblique drawings. If you have noticed your surrounding or an image from a photograph, any parallel lines seem to vanish into the horizon. In perspective drawing, the same effect is applied. The common types of perspective sketching are one-point perspective and two-point perspective. One-point perspective, commonly called parallel perspective, is made with one vanishing point. In one-point perspective, one of the principal faces is parallel to the picture plane. Follow the following steps to sketch a one-point perspective sketch of an object. Sketch the horizon line and look at the vanishing point on the horizon. The vanishing point may be located to the right, to the left, or to the midpoint of the horizon, depending on the details of the object. Draw the front view of the object at any convenient distance below the horizontal line. Sketch light construction lines from points on the front view to the vanishing point. Locate points along the depth and construct the enclosing box. Points along depth may be located by projection method. However, this needs a more involved procedure and is thus used only when drawing with instruments. In sketching, points along the depth are simply assumed in such a way that the final sketch will be pleasing enough. A sketch details on each face. Darken the object lines to complete the sketch. A two-point perspective, often known as angular perspective. This sketch is made with two vanishing points. The following step is commonly used in sketching a two-point perspective. A sketch the horizon line and look at the left and right side vanishing points. Draw a single vertical line at a location between one quarter and one third the distance from the left vanishing point. This line will represent the closest edge of the point. Mark the height of the object on the vertical line, 
measuring upward from the ground line and row converging lines from the top and bottom of the vertical line to both vanishing points. Continue by creating the bounding box and roughing in the features. Remember that only the vertical lines will not converge. Finish the sketch by darkening all the final lines. Well students, yet again it's time for you to practice the two-point perspective of the object from the activity earlier. Keep practicing and you'll be good at it in no time. Students, before we conclude our program for today, let us briefly revise the lessons we have learned. In today's lesson, 
We have seen the basic skills of sketching, multi-view, and pictorial drawings. We have seen the two methods of sketching, multi-view drawings, the outside-in method and the inside-out method. We have practiced the techniques of sketching oblique and isometric drawings. And finally, we saw the two types of perspective sketching, the one-point perspective and the two-point perspective. Students, keep practicing your sketching from the checkpoint on your textbook and the object around you. The main advantage of freehand sketching is you can do it anywhere with few drawing instruments and much more quickly than instrumental drawing. Teacher, please assist the students on their practices. In our next lesson, we will start the next chapter, Auxiliary Views. And from it, we will see the position of reference line, horizontal projection and elevation view. Until then, thank you teacher and thank you students. Goodbye.